Hello everybody from Landshut in southern Germany. I am Paul Bayer, the author of Actors. Actors are hot and I want to share with you my enthusiasm about them. The good news is you can start playing and creating with actors in Julia right now. Let me first show you what they are and where do they come from and, and how I have implemented them in Julia. Then I will give you some first impressions and show you their use. Actors have quite a history in computing and are inspired by physics and biology. There is a strong relationship to object-oriented programming. The quotes that chart are from Alan Kay. He thought about objects communicating with messages when he started developing small talk in 1969. The actor model then made its first appearance in 1973. Erlang, the most successful actor language so far, is born in the 80s at Ericsson out of practical requirements in telecommunication. Coming to the actor model, it makes sense to think of actors as communicating objects, which can process messages, send messages to each other, create new actors and change their state and behavior. Carl Hewitt said they embody the three elements of computation processing, storage and communication. The beautiful thing about all that is that it scales. Actors compose into systems. We can have them doing the most elementary computations or serve arbitrary complex operations and have as many of them as we want on one computer or across a network. They can change location, grow and shrink. They even are not bound to lang one language. But let's start first with actors in Julia. Let's do a quick demo. An actor takes a function as behavior. Here I have a function inc with a bank to increment a variable a with the parameter c. We will spawn an actor with the inc bank behavior function. Give it the first parameter of value zero as an acquaintance. That gives us a link back which wraps a Julia channel. Over that we can send it messages using the Actors API. We see that it even has a name, albeit a strange one. Now we repeatedly call the actor with the yet missing communication parameter C and get the result back. We see that this is a stateful communication. Each computation gives us a different result. Our actor has stayed. Now I change its behavior to the dink bang uh, function. With that it serves a dictionary. We give it an empty dictionary as acquaintance. It now will increment a dictionary entry when a message with a key value pair arrives. Okay, then we send it 1000 messages concurrently from tasks on all available calls. If we now call our actor without arguments, we get back the dictionary showing how often our actor has received a message from each call. Our actor has serialized the asynchronous messages, so there was no race condition and all sums up to 1000. Fine. But stop! That was one actor. How about thousands of them? In order to demonstrate to you that actors are lightweight, I have a link behavior, which takes a link, receives a message and sends it incremented back to that link. We compose those link actors into a chain of arbitrary length, send the last one a message and wait for the message coming back to the first one. Thus we can measure how long does it take to spawn n actors and pushing a message through them? We see that it takes about 20 milliseconds for 1000 multi-threaded actors. That means about 20 microseconds to start one, receive and send a message and to stop. 
This takes longer than to start a simple task since some messaging is involved, but that will yet improve. With actors.jl right now you can provide services to parallel tasks and worker processes in Julia, implement concurrent applications and build fault-tolerant systems. Let me give you a glimpse into a possible future of Julia Actors and show you how, why I think it should be developed. Actors can scale in functionality and across computers and languages and therefore I ask myself if I could wrap Julia into an actor and serve it to Erlang or Elixir clients in a network. I wrote an experimental package Erchelix which lets Erlang, Julia and Elixir communicate over UDP sockets. Surprisingly, it takes only three types of messages to serve Julia's functionality, evil pass, call and set. Let's try it out. In a Julia session, I spawn a task which listens to UDP socket 6000 and starts another evil server actor on demand. Then from the Elixir REPL, I use the Erlang model on the left side to ask Julia for an evil server. We can see that Julia spawned an actor listening to a new socket and created a temporary module for it. Now we can let the Julia evil server evaluate commands from the Elixir side. We see that it is running on thread 3. Next we call a factorial from it. Oh, let's try with 50. Now we get an error message from Julia. Therefore, we request the Julia server to create a new function that can calculate such big factorials. And then we can call that and get another big number. You may be interested how long such an interaction between Julia and Erlang does take on my machine. We time it with Erlang. And we see that it takes about 500 microseconds. How long, how long may such an interaction take with the remote machine? Let's try the same from the pipe by, besides my desk. We give Elixir on the little pie the evil server address and we see that it takes the pie about 24 milliseconds to get the big factorial from Julia over the network. That's not bad either. I hope I could sh show you some interesting stuff with actors, awake your interest and I hope to see you soon as an avid user of them. Bye bye.